What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate all the various ways of connecting Deco BE85 by actually showing you guys the various connections. So I have a bunch of ethernet cables. I have an unmanaged switch. I have a typical setup. So we'll start from a typical setup and how to uh, basically configure the mesh system. And the setup should be very similar to the Deco BE95 and some of the other Decos. Okay, so we'll start with a typical setup, which is if you have a modem, and a router and in my case this is just a modem this is not a modem router combo so i have a separate modem and a separate router and if i had a modem router combo what i would need to do is basically disable the router portion of that uh, and the way you would typically do that i mean depends on the model um, but if you had a modem router combo there's there's a sticker with some info on it i'm hiding it for uh on this one uh, but basically there's a sticker with some info on it that you'd basically like type to a browser. So it'd be typically an IP address you would go to or some name that you would type into a browser with the computer hooked to the network. It would ask you to log in. And um, then you would look for something called enable bridge mode, which essentially disables the router or disable router or some other option. You can optionally call your ISP, your internet service provider, and ask them how to disable it, or you can ask them if you could switch out your modem router combo for just a modem. Unless you wanted to buy your own modem, then you would need to make sure that it is compatible with your ISP. Okay, so for the purposes of the setup, and I do get this question asked um, often enough, if you have a modem router combo and you decide to keep the router portion of it, you could actually set it up and set up the deco and access point mode. And that's something you would do inside the deco app. However, that's not something I recommend. And it's not going to give you the best possible signal because generally in a network, you do want your best router to be your primary router. Uh, so, and because this is a essentially a beastie router, you would typically want this to be your main router. Um, but it is possible technically to have your modem router combo and then have these just run as access points, except that's not something I typically recommend. Okay, so for the sake of this video, we have just a modem. If you have an ONT, an optical network terminal, in fact, I, at home, I run an optical network terminal, an ONT, because I have fiber optic internet. Uh, but that would be the same as an o ONT or a modem or a DSL or whatever is giving you your internet source that you take from the ethernet cable from that and then you hook up to your router. Um, so this guy's providing internet access and then this guy's providing internet, taking that internet access and sharing it with your devices on your home network. So again, modem, router. So what you would do is you basically disconnect the router and put it off to the side because you no longer need that. And you basically, in, this, in the case of the Deco, all three of these physically are actually routers. So you could pick any one of the three you want and that would act as your router. The other two, if you got a three pack or if you got a two pack, the other one would act as an access point or a satellite or a node or an extender or whatever you want to call it. Um, so again, because these three of these are physically routers, I'm just going to pick this first one, the one that's closest to the modem, and I'm going to plug it in. Now, uh, again, as soon as I plug this in, this becomes my router. And again, those act as access points. That's not something you need to configure. It happens automatically within the Deco app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. Now, here's where things get interesting. Because the Deco BE85 uh, can handle internet speeds of up to 10 gigabits, the cable speed matters. So this yellow cable is actually a Cat5e cable. Now, if I had up to gigabit internet speeds, that would be fine. And in fact, for short distances, the cat 5 e can go faster. Uh, but at that point, I start recommending CAT6 or CAT7 cables. So I have CAT7 cables, and this stuff I have links to, uh, but this would be a CAT7 ethernet cable, which can handle speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second. So in my particular case, my internet speeds are five gigabits per second upload and download, and cat 5 e is not fast enough for me, uh, and neither is this modem. This modem is actually specifically capped up to 2.5 gigabits. Uh, but again, this is a cable modem, has nothing to do with my ONT, and we're getting off track here. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that if you're going faster than gigabit, uh, even though cat 5 e is okay for short distances above that, uh, up to like two, two and a half gigabytes, I would start looking at CAT6 or CAT7 cables. Um, so we'll start off with the CAT7 cable. 
And let's just assume that this modem it does go to five gigabits per second. So I would basically plug this in to my modem and then I would take this cat seven cable and then I, because my internet speeds are five gigabits per second, I would want to pick one of these two 10 gigabit ports and it doesn't matter because they're all auto sensing. So if I plug it into this and then I set it up in the deco app, now I have a new network setup. So what I had with the router before is now what I have with this. Um, again, once I'm finishing up with the Deco app. And if you guys want, if you pick the same Wi-Fi name, which is your SSID and password as your existing router, your devices should automatically connect to this one. Um, so, and it is very important to note that the SSID, which is your Wi-Fi name and the password are both case sensitive. Okay. So at that point we're golden. Now, if you had internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, you can actually pick any one of these ports. You could pick the 2.5 gigabit port and that would be fine as well. Again, the Deco has auto sensing ports, so it would figure it out and you would be golden. But again, in my case, I have uh, five gigabit speeds, so I'd wanna pick one of these two 10 gig ports because it can handle up to those speeds. So again, once I do this, my network is set up. Now I plug in the other ones. And when I plug in the other ones to power, uh, it, in the Deco app, it tells you uh, when to do that. Uh, so towards the end, you plug these in and then they automatically connect to this. And now you have this super network essentially because now you have really good coverage um, away. Of, so versus what your original router was, like maybe it was working very well if you're close to it, but the further away you got, uh, maybe it started lagging. Uh, it wasn't getting in the speeds that you wanted. If you were gaming or something like that, you needed that low ping. It just wasn't giving it to you. Um, this, these should do a lot better, especially this is a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system and the wireless backhaul on this thing is superb. Specifically, the BE85 has superb wireless backhaul speeds. And now you have this beefy network. And if you're wondering, you don't need to, like if you're walking throughout your home, you connect to that one Wi-Fi name, your SSID. If you're closer to this one, it'll switch you here. If you start walking two or three rooms away, it'll detect you're closer to this one and it'll switch you here automatically. There's nothing you need to do on your phone or your Wi-Fi device to automatically connect to this one. The Deco handles all of that for you to give you the best possible speeds. And when you switch over, it's not gonna read buffer. Like all of that is happening in the background. So you're golden. Your, your call is not gonna get cut out if you're on Wi-Fi calling mode. You're, um, it's not gonna buffer. Assuming your internet speeds are fast enough to handle it, um, it shouldn't, uh, there's not going to be a, oh, disconnect and then connect. No, it's going to be seamless to you. Uh, again, assuming your internet speeds are fast enough. Okay, so at that point, you have a wireless backhaul set up and you are getting super speeds already. Now, a common question I get asked is, can I mix wired and wire, wireless backhaul together? And the answer is yes. So if you wanted, I get another Cat7 Ethernet cable. And what I'm going to do is I could hook it up to the 10 gig, two and a half, or the other two and a half, but because I want to run a full five, my full five gig internet speed to the other guy, I do want to use the 10 gig port on this. So I plug it in like this, and then I take this one, and in my case, I have ethernet cables going through the attic, which makes it to the other room, and I basically plug it into the other guy to one of the 10 gig ports. If I plug it into the 2.5, I will still get internet speeds, but I will be capped at 2.5 at this node. And that's not something I want, so I basically use one of the 10 gig ports. So when I do this, now I have full five gigs here in my case, again, assuming this modem was fast enough to do that, uh, but I, I would get my full internet speeds here and my full internet speeds here because these ports can handle up to 10 gig speeds. Um, and now I have a wired backhaul and a wireless backhaul and I'm still golden. Again, I could still walk out throughout my house. So it'll switch me here, switch me here, switch me here and I will get really, really good speeds. Now, if I want, I can hook up this guy too. Now here's the interesting thing. Um, I'm running out of Cat7 <laughs> cables. This is a Cat7 cable as well. So another thing I could do is I can either go from the router to the other guy if I want to do them both wired so I could pick one of the 2.5s. And if I go from the 2.5 out of this to the 10 of this, 
I will be capped to 2.5 gigabits because it picks the slower of the two. So if, I going, if I'm going from 2.5 to 10, it'll pick the 2.5. And if I'm going from 10 to the 2.5, it'll pick the 2.5. So it picks the slowest of the two. So what I could do is I could go from this or I can actually connect this to the 10 gig port of this. And now this would be a full, in my case, a full five gig here, a full five gig here, and a full five gig here for internet speeds. Um, so local speeds can go up to 10 gigs, but as soon as I'm accessing the internet, I'm still not capped. Um, so I'm still good to go at up to five gigs for my internet speeds. Now you might be asking, okay, well I did this and I want some fast ports. So I have a computer that can handle up to 10 gig speed. So I want to get the full five gigs on that. Well, how do I do that? Well, one of the ways you could connect it is I have a cat six cable right here. Um, you could connect your computer to this port right here. And um, assuming this cable can handle up to 10 gig speeds and your computer can handle up to 10 gig speeds, you will get the full five gig speeds for your internet speeds if you connect it from this. However, if you're running out of ports, you can just get a switch. Now, the switch I'm using is an unmanaged switch. This one, this switch is actually capped to gigabit speeds. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, let's just assume this switch can go up to 10 gig speeds, which in reality it cannot. I actually, my 10 gig switch is hooked up with all the cables and everything. Uh, so that one is getting the full 10 gigs, but let's just assume this one can't. Um, because what I could do is I could go from this guy to any one of these ports that I want. It doesn't matter which one I select. And now I'll have seven other ports that I can actually connect to. So I'm going to take a quick water break or Pellegrino mineral water break. 12 seconds later. So assuming this was a 10 gig switch, which it's not, but assuming this was a 10 gig switch, I can now use all of these and get up to my five gig internet speeds. Again, assuming the hardware itself can handle it and assuming the cable itself can handle those speeds. Um, I can also hook up this to any one of the other ports um, that I want to. But again, if I hook it up to the modem right here, uh, not the modem, sorry. If I hook it up to the router right here, this will cap me to 2.5 gigabit speeds, but I am free to use it. Um, and that would add more ports. So that's another way. And, and you can also go from, if you wanted to, so, so this guy's going to the modem and let's just say, okay. So what I could do is I could also just go from the router directly to the switch and then from the switch like my purple one, I could go to this uh, secondary node. That would also work fine. Really the most important thing for order is that this modem is directly connected to the router. There is no switch in between it because one of the questions I get asked is, can I go from the switch to the modem directly and then from the switch, can I go to all three of them? The answer is no. Um, the router needs to be first because the router comes up with an NAT and network address translation and that basically tells everyone what to do, like what IP addresses map to what. And it basically has that table and this guy needs to be instructed on what to do. So this guy can't come first. So really the most, most, most important thing is the router hooked up to the modem directly. After that, you have a lot of free choice. So much free choice that if we were to go back to wireless backhaul mode. So let's just get rid of all the ethernet cables. Okay, so pretty much got rid of all the ethernet cables right there. Okay, so let's say we went back to a wireless backhaul setup. I'm actually free to use any one of these ports and connect it to my devices. So even though this is wirelessly talking to each other, I can still use the ports. In fact, I did a separate video on this. I'll link it down below. In fact, I'll link the product links down below as well if you guys are interested. Uh, but basically, even though this is wirelessly talking to this one, I can still use the Ethernet ports on this to connect to my devices. And in fact, if I do that, assuming the device can go fast enough, 
I will actually get better speeds that way. And I'll, I'll show you guys the video where I demonstrate that, literally. I can also, if I wanted to, literally hook up a switch to one of these ports. And again, assuming this was a 10 gig port, I can have seven other ports that can go up to 10 gigs or up to five gigs for the internet speeds. And you can do that as well. And so you have a lot of freedom, a lot of choice, or I could go directly from this to a computer or an Xbox or a PlayStation or whatever. Um, so you have a lot of choice and, all, and a lot of this stuff is handled automatically within the Deco app. So you're good to go there. And um, yeah, I mean, that pretty much covers it up. Do you have a lot of freedom? You'll get really good coverage. The wireless backhaul speeds on the Deco B85 is very, very good. And it's, it's genuinely incredible how fast it is. Uh, it's almost as good as wired backhaul speeds from my testing at up to the five gig speeds that I did. It, it is almost as good. It's ridiculous how fast it was. So one other thing I wanted to mention is that this is a Netgear switch. You can actually pick any brand name switch that you want and it will work with TP-Link. So as long as it's an unmanaged switch or even a managed switch, um, so the brand itself doesn't matter. They are compatible with each other. So I could get a Netgear. It will work with TP-Link. It'll work with Asus. It'll work with Netgear. I could get a TP-Link switch. It'll work with TP-Link, Netgear, Asus, Eero, um, whatever other brand, uh, basically. Linksys, Rei. So there's a lot of brands, basically. Um, but yeah, you're free to use that. And again, this is technically a gigabit switch. So uh, by connecting this to any one of these, I would actually be capping the speeds to gigabit speeds here. So, but for the demo, I kept saying that let's just assume this is a 10 gig switch. All right, with that, thank you guys for watching. Smash the subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.